I've posted a lot of videos of me beating brown belts as a white belt, but a lot of people think I was a sandbagger or I had prior grappling experience. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how much training I did leading up to these wins. <laughs> prior athletic experience and my general jujitsu journey so you have a better idea on how I did this. I started jujitsu in July 2019 when I joined 10th Plant in New York City. 10th Plant is a purely no-gi school and to this day I've only trained and competed in the gi once. Help me! As soon as I started I was obsessed. I was going as much as I could and within three months I competed in my first competition. I went two and two and for me that was pretty good because I was facing people with a lot of experience. And in the competition there was this one kid who had been training for three years for some reason which was pretty ridiculous. I kept competing with mixed results, and in my third competition, six months in, I was finally able to win that Grappling Industries white belt gold. Let's go! The good thing about Grappling Industries is that each tournament was round robin, so you had a guaranteed four matches, and I was getting a lot of experience. In the gym, I felt like I was hitting my stride. I started doing better against the upper belts, and I felt like my jiu-jitsu was really coming together. But then... First confirmed... Death from declaring what? public health emergency. More than 56,000 will be more. Mr. Ponton, I believe you have a filter turned on. For two months, I didn't train at all, which was kind of good, actually, because I think I had partially torn my meniscus and it gave it time to heal. After those two months, I started training with a small group of people. There were no competitions, so I couldn't compete again until September that year. This time, it was the blue belt division. Because I beat brown belts as a white belt, you might think I ran through this division, but I actually got tapped by armbar in overtime. That sucked, but I had dominate all my other matches so I felt like I was above a blue belt level at this point and I was planning on challenging myself by going up another level by entering the brown slash black belt division but how in nine months am I above the level of people who trained one to three years the comment section has a lot of theories one is that I used to wrestle this is only said by people who don't wrestle because if you see my wrestling it's atrocious and also I always pull guard or that I'm secretly a black belt from Pakistan which may be true but in reality, my only athletic experience was doing four years of track in high school and watching a lot of UFC. But I think something that helped me was that before I started, me and my friends would wrestle all the time. We'd go as far as setting up matches in my friend's backyard, and we never learned any technique, but I do think this helped me learn how to move my body. Put him in the arm bar! But above all else, I think what truly helped me was that I was obsessed. My school was online at the time, so I was just training nine times a week. And when I wasn't training, I was watching YouTube videos about jiu-jitsu, thinking about jiu-jitsu. And that's why a month later, I felt like I was ready to compete in the expert division. My first match was against a brown belt named Jack Stapleton, someone my coach had gone against before, which naturally made me pretty nervous. The match started, and it was tough, because he had some good guard passing, but I was armed with a secret weapon. The Gordon Ryan Seated Guard Instructional. For the three months leading up to this comp, I was watching this and just trying to hit all the moves in it in practice. So my seated slash butterfly guard game had reached a new level, and I was able to use one of the sweeps from there to get on top and pass it multiple times. And I ended up getting the win on points. But I definitely did outweigh him by a bit, but in my next match, I didn't have that luxury. I was going against a jacked brown belt MMA fighter. I always find that MMA fighters have a really good base, and this guy was no exception. It was really hard to move him, let alone put him on his back. While I try to sweep him, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, X Marshall. They're a brand that has a whole store full of high quality rash guards, shorts, and geese. In the beginning, I was always the guy with the baggy shorts and the t-shirt that you get your fingers caught in. So I wish I knew about X Marshall back then so I could have got through that phase quicker. Oh, also, these palm strikes were really annoying. So stop looking like you're about to play a pickup game at basketball and pick up some X Marshall rash guards with the link in the description. You can use code JoshRichBJJ for 10% off. But once again, I was able to use my butterfly guard to get on top, this time using a shoulder crunch. Then I used my complicated passing system of knee slice, and if that didn't work, hip switch, and if that didn't work, knee slice to get the pass. And once again, get the win on points. But everything started to crumble in my last match. It was against a blue belt who just kept not engaging my guard and got a point for this BS straight ankle. So I was down on points, about choking the final after beating two brown belts. There's only 30 seconds left, so I went for a Hail Mary shot. He tries to choke me, but I fall back and hit a butterfly sweep. He comes up to his knees, so I get my hooks in and then lock up the rear naked choke. Oh my god! 
getting me that Naga belt. I was able to beat brown belts on points, but I still couldn't submit them. In a month, I was going to compete in a sub-only competition in the brown slash black belt division. So I started studying the Gordon Ryan back attack instructional. I applied what I learned in it to my training, and I saw my submission rate go up, but it was time to apply it in competition. In my first match, I'd be going against Chris Crawford, a skilled leg locker and BJJ brown belt. I started the match up with an ankle pick, putting me on top, which was usually good, but now I had to pass Chris's guard without getting leg lock. I knew if I respected his guard too much, he'd tap me. So I just had to keep moving forward. Eventually, I'm able to make a breakthrough and get the pass. But I had been mainly practicing my back attacks, and my attacks from side control were questionable. So he's able to escape. He knocks me to my butt, and I start getting pretty stressed. My leg lock defense was literally non-existent, and he was one leg pummel away from leg locking me. But luckily, I'm able to regain my base and continue to pass. In moments like these, I felt like my background with track and field help. I had to just keep pushing off the ground, coming forward towards him, and eventually, I find an opening for my secret knee slice hip switch combo. He comes up to his knees, and this was my chance to take his back. But as I chase it, he's able to get his back to the mat. Then invert to throw up a triangle. As we go out of the bounds, I push him off and we get reset. If you want any proof that I didn't wrestle before BJJ, here it is. Regulation was coming to an end and it was time for overtime where we would take turns starting on the back until someone got the submission. I'm able to control him by keeping a tight seatbelt and hooks. And eventually, I find my way under his chin. I lock up the RNC and squeeze to get the tap. And then I got heel hooked in my next match. <laughs> Despite this, I ended up getting promoted to blue belt shortly after, and that's the story of me as a white belt. If you guys want to keep following my journey, subscribe, I'll catch you next time.